Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm going to do my March 2021 layout share and monthly wrap up. I ended up creating over 30 layouts with the kit I put together at the beginning of the month. And that's what you're about to see on the screen. This was made up of eight different collections. Half of them were old, half of them were new. And if you want to see how I put this kit together, I will put a link to the kit building video below. Also this month, I had a designer focus. I was following Christine Mayer on YouTube. She's known as Scrapping with Christine. You will find some of her inspiration in the pages I'm about to show you. And at the very end of this video, I'll also talk a little bit about my experience. But before continuing, I just want to point out if there are any layout process videos for the pages I'm about to show you, they will be linked up below. Also, I did have to cover up some of the photos. And finally, at the very end of this video, there are still shots of a lot of these layouts. So the first eight pages I'm going to show you all come from Cartabella and most of them from the Winter Market Collection. So the page you see on the left, that one is a scrap lift from Christine Mayer. She did a tutorial on her channel where she created that heart. She's got like a little mini playlist of quilted scrapbooking. I think there are three videos on it and that's from one of them and it's really well explained. The page on the right was just a very simple page design that I created to coordinate with it. Now here are two more pages and the page on the left actually I created that in February on YouTube. I'm showing you a pocket there where I tucked in extra photos and journaling. I will link that up below as well in case you're interested, but what I did in March was I created the page to coordinate with it. That's what you see on the right, and you can see I used that giant Viewmaster wheel. That is from Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's actually two dies, the Viewmaster wheel and those Viewmaster words that you see in the wheel. And that was one of the tools that I put in my kit for the month of March to use. Here are two more layouts, again, from the Cartabella Winter Market Collection. And actually this one here, the page on the right, I created that for YouTube for the Punched Out Thursday to Die For collaboration, but the page looks completely different. All of the embellishments that you see on these two pages, I did create on YouTube, but when I went to create the coordinating page for the page I created on YouTube, I couldn't make it work, so I kept dissecting the page and this is what I ended up with. Anyway, there is a video on my channel where I do create those embellishments with my tools so I will definitely link that up below. Usually when I create a single page I have the second, the double page in mind, but for this one I didn't and I got into trouble because of it. Here are two more pages made with Cartabella material. Now you can see they are not wintry pages. When I put my kit together at the beginning of the month, I threw in some older Cartabella material and that's what I created these two pages with. These pages are created um, using a sketch from the six by six paper pad class from Allison Davis at Scrapbook Generation. So that's a fun one. And actually those photos are in Ireland in Belfast. Now I'm changing collections. This one is the Simple Stories Simple Vintage Ancestry Collection. And I created nine pages with this. So that's what you're about to see. This is the only one I created as a heritage page. The other ones are all current day photos, even though this is a heritage collection. I bought this collection for its colors. I really, truly love the rich jewel tones. So here are two more pages. And the page on the left, there is a layout process video for that page design, not the page itself. And you're about to see the page that I created on YouTube. The page on the right is one of my go-to designs for a page to page. A simple grid, two vertical, two horizontal photos, add a border to it and one little embellishment. And it works really, really well with more fancier pages. And you're going to see more of that throughout this layout chair. Here are the other two pages. As you can see, the one on the right is very similar to the one that I just showed you. And the one on the right, there is a layout process video for it. 
The page on the left is another one of my go-to page two designs. Again, all I did was line up six horizontal blocks. Five of them are photos. One of them is reserved for journaling. And I'll do that in a little bit after I do this layout share. Two more pages from the Simple Stories Vintage Ancestry Collection. As you can see, the page on the right, again, that very simple grid design that I often use as a companion page. The page on the left, again, very simple page. I have difficulty with paper, background paper, when there are gigantic images on it. So all I did here was kind of divide it in two and kind of decorated the half that was solid color. That's it. Pretty simple. Came together very, very quickly. Now here's a double page spread that I created as a practice page for the Stretch the Sketch YouTube collaboration. You're going to see the one I did for YouTube in a moment. Again, this is still the Simple Stories Vintage Ancestry Collection. And I'm showing you the sketch that I stretched. It's actually a sketch from MK Gun on YouTube. You can kind of see it's a four block grid. There are a lot of hexagons on it. And all I did was kind of stretch the mat over onto the right hand page. Here's the one I did on YouTube. So this one looks a lot busier. I've changed collections here. This one is Doodlebug Designs Made with Love Collection. I only did two pages, these two, for this month using that kit simply because it's way out of my comfort zone and I just put it in there to have something different. Again, I'm showing you MK sketch, how I took that four block grid and kind of stretched it. Again, I added quite a bit to this with the journaling block over on the left hand side and that huge embellishment cluster with title over on the right. I'm going to show you both pages here just to show you how different they look. You can see on the one beneath there, there's only one photo on the right. And the one on top, I actually added three photos. But the idea is the same. All I did was stretch the match across two pages and kind of line up my photos. I'm changing collections here again. I only did one page with this collection. It's Pink Fresh Studios Let's Stay Home collection. And I just did this one on YouTube the other day. It's for the collaboration Scrapbooking from the Heart. And in March, we were talking about hope. And in my video, I was talking about the therapeutic benefits, for me anyway, of scrapbooking. So if that's something that interests you, you can check out my video. Now I'm changing collections again. This one is the Simple Stories Cozy Days collection, and I did six pages with this collection. The page on the left there, I did do it on YouTube for the um, Punched Out Thursday to Die For collaboration. So I created all of my embellishments with tools from my stash. And you can see the page on the right. Again, it's that very same four block grid that I often use to pair with a more fancy page. So still working with the Cozy Days collection here. These two pages look way more busier on the screen than what I'm seeing here in person. Uh, maybe it's because I had to cover up a bunch of the photos. What I'm showing you there is this one here is inspiration from Christy Mayer, my designer focus. Those strips of paper are adhered flat to the page, but the bottom parts of the strip are all popped up with foam adhesive. And it's something she did on YouTube this month. And I thought it was really, really interesting. Her page looks completely different. I think it was a St. Patrick's Day page, but the idea came from there. Also, she's part of a design team with adhesives, so she does really cool stuff with adhesives. And the page on the right is just a very simple page. These are two complete different stories, but they are going to go side by side in my album. Two more pages from the Cozy Days collection. Again, you can see that four block grid that I often use to pair with a more fancy page. The page on the right there, that one was one I did I was inspired by Debbie Hodge from Masterful Scrapbook Design. Now, I used to follow her a long time ago, and that was one of her page designs. Anyway, again, Cozy Days collection. I got tons of use out of that collection since last fall. I still have a tiny bit of it left, but I'm really working my way through it. And I don't mind having a bit left over because I really love that collection. 
changing collections here. This one, again, simple stories, but it's the Bro and Co collection. And I really did kill that part of my kit this month. You can see the page on the left. I have a heart there. That's quite literally a hand-drawn heart. I did some faux stitching around the edge. I made a huge cluster with stickers and I simply made a coordinating simple page on the right. When I started this month, I had a full 12 by 12 sheet of stickers from that Bro & Co collection and basically I killed it. Here are two more pages. Now the page there that is on the right with the large title, that one is inspiration from Allison Davis at Scrapbook Generation, not the six by six paper pad class, just from her YouTube channel. She was showing different things to do with a sketch and she had this triangle page. And one of her ideas was to create kind of like that quilted look with it. And I did it not long after I did that other quilted heart from Christine Mayer. So I was just kind of into that quilting thing at that part of the month. So it made kind of a really fun layout for that. And obviously the page on the left is just a really simple page design lining up three vertical photos. Now I'm using Vicki Booten's Storyteller Collection and the page on the right. That one I did do on YouTube for the Scrapbook Nerd. Again, I used that Elizabeth Craft Design viewfinder wheel as well as those viewfinder words. I absolutely love it. And I also have that planner page there um, that is from Elizabeth Craft Designs as well. And all I did here was stretch that border across two pages and added some photos and that was it. Two more pages here. Now the next ones I'm going to show you, the page on the left, I already did that on YouTube and I will link it up below. But what I did this month was I added two pages that I needed to create the page two for. I have this pile of pages that I've only created one of the two pages. So I'm kind of trying to work my way through it. So all I did was create a simple page and that was what you saw on the right. And again, the page that you see on the right there, I did it on YouTube a while back. I'll link it up below as well. So what I did this month was I created the coordinating page. That's what you see on the left. Super, super simple. I just lined up three horizontal photos, added one main embellishment cluster and kind of used the scraps of paper that was left over from the original page. In 2021, my plan is to never leave a page without its coordinating page done. And what I'm doing every month is I'm kind of working backwards a bit to do the 20 some odd photos, actually only about 20 pages that I haven't done. Actually, I'm down to 15 now, so that's not too bad. I'm showing you two tools that I didn't get to this month. That stencil there is from Simple Stories. I was hoping to use it this month. I tried it, but I didn't use it. As well as those stamps, Circle Celebration from Stampin' Up. I wanted to use them, but I ended up not. Those are gonna stay close to my desk until I actually use them. So that's it for the month. Anyway, you're gonna see some still shots of the pages, but while you see them, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my designer focus this month. Christine Mayer, known as Scrapping with Christine on YouTube. I absolutely loved her channel. I kind of discovered it last year, but I really wanted to get back into watching it. She has kind of a clean, practical approach to scrapbooking with a very fun twist. She always has a fun twist in her videos and she explains herself very well. Now I watched all of her videos this month and some of her other ones, but I have a lot more to watch. She has tons of videos there. So I plan to continue that a bit in the month of April along with a bit more of a designer focus. And I'll talk about that in my video tomorrow when I do my April kit share. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I would be absolutely thrilled if you did. Check in tomorrow. I will be doing my April kit share and talking about my designer focus. And the next day I'll have a process video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.